Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine CES 2024. We're here at the Blink Charging booth. We got Mike Battaglia here, and we're gonna talk, learn a little bit more about charging, and we're gonna do that next on Geekazine. Tell us a little bit about what uh, Blink Charging is and what you guys are debuting here at CES. So last couple of years, we've had a huge presence at CES, large, large booth. We were introducing a ton of new products, last year, nine alone. Uh, and this year, what we decided to do was kind of shrink that down a little bit and really talk to folks like yourself, partners, uh, customers about how we continue to advance uh, EV infrastructure in the United States. Now, what Blink does principally is we are a full service end-to-end -end EV charging company. And so what that means is we provide uh, all types of uh, EV charging hardware. So what we call AC or level two hardware, uh, DC fast charging hardware, we have our own software network that powers that ecosystem of chargers uh, coast to coast, and we provide installation services. So we refer to ourselves and we are really the only pure vertically integrated EV charging company because we manufacture uh, a good percentage of our own hardware as well. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the, what we've got here then. Yeah, so what we have sitting next to me is kind of our bread and butter product. This is an AC level two charger it is called the Series 7, and this particular unit that you see is actually the product that the United States Post Office selected as the preferred charger for their infrastructure of their new EV uh, mail delivery vehicles. Okay. So this charger can uh, dispense up to 19.2 kilowatts uh, from each port, which is actually the maximum that the Level 2 specification can take. And there are multiple ways to access and utilize this charging station. Uh, for instance, I can... Uh, use a mobile app to pay for a charging session in a, in a public setting, or let's say I can have an RFID card or the mobile app in a fleet setting in order to control access to the charger. There's, there's two connectors. Okay. Now, what the charger is able to do is to charge two cars simultaneously at 80 amps or 19.2 kilowatts at the same time, or if only one car is hooked up, Again, that single vehicle would get the full 80 amps, the full 19. So would be, it would be a faster charger? It's, it depends how you install it. So, and this is kind of about how much do you want to invest in the infrastructure. So the charger's capable of taking two dedicated circuits to each of these ports. Okay. And when it does that, you get the full ADM. This is going to be meant for personal, this could be meant for commercial. So this is really commercial, okay. right? This is really commercial fleet application. So, you know, when you think about the EV charging ecosystem, there's... There, first of all, there's the two different types of chargers that I mentioned. There's level two and then there's DC. Yeah. So this type of charger is what you will see 90% of the time coast to coast in the United States. So this is a charger that is designed uh, to power an electric vehicle during longer dwell times. So if I'm gonna be at a location for let's say more than an hour, this is a perfect charger to be uh, charging up my vehicle. So things like anywhere that I live, work, play, shop, uh, this type of charger you'll see uh, in, in, a, in a parking lot. The one thing to keep in mind about EV infrastructure in general, when we talk about level two and we talk about DC, it's a very, very different investment proposition. Okay. So we hear a lot in the press about DC fast charging, highway corridor, uh, President Biden's 500,000 charging stations coast to coast. And that is, that those are DC fast chargers. They are, um, they're more costly. They're more expensive to put in by a wide margin, and the timelines associated with putting those in are much longer. Okay. So on the level two side, which you see here, it is, they, the chargers are not as fast, but they are much, much less expensive, a fraction of the cost. They are much easier to install, and you can get one of these in the ground inside of 90 days. What about temperature control uh, charging in colder weathers versus hotter weather? Yeah, so first of all, when we talk about the charger itself, uh, this via, this charger is rated at, I believe it's negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, okay. all the way up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So it has a very, very wide uh, operating range, both cold, both hot. Now, when we talk about, well, how does that affect charging? Uh, if if uh, the climate is either really, really hot or really, really cold, it does affect uh, charging speeds. It affects how quickly your battery draws, you know. Uh, yeah. But, you know, for the majority of us in a kind of a normal environment, 
uh, you're going to get kind of a full performance out of your battery. And Normal environment. I'm from Wisconsin. It's going to be it's below be cold. 13 next week. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be cold. Yeah. Uh, so what type of monitoring uh, systems are in there? Like if, uh, yeah. if somebody plugs in the car, will the charger be able to say, hey, there's something wrong with your battery or it's going to take this long? Great question. And one of the things that Blink does is we develop our own software. And the software network does a variety of things. Number one is, is it enables um, payment transactions and access to the charger. That's number one. Number two, it allows us to monitor the chargers coast to coast. So we have a facility in Tempe, Arizona, where uh, our technicians are consistently getting feedback from the network to say, hey, this charger's got a green light. It's good. This charger's not. And then we diagnose it and, and, we, and we either can fix it remotely or we have to uh, send a technician to it. But um, what the software does is it enables you to view things like how quickly am I charging, uh, what's my state of charge, and then eventually we'll build in things like you mentioned where if you plug in your vehicle, the vehicle and the charger are, are talking to each other and then potentially things like, hey, there's a fault, there's something wrong with your battery, there's diagnostics, and in fact, SAE, which is a, um, an organization that provides a standards to the industry, announced a standard for, I believe it's 2025, for chargers interfacing with vehicles to provide diagnostics. So let's say I'm a, a owner of a fleet and I get uh, Blink in to charge all my fleet vehicles. Uh, how much control or how much data can, can I completely cut you off from the data or do you need to be able to communicate back and forth between our, the system? Ah, good question. So when we talk about data availability, there is a, a host of data that's available in the portal for a customer to access. So things like uh, I mentioned a minute ago, the state of my health of my chargers that are installed, right? Which ones are up, which ones are down? Yeah. That's no basic number one. Number two is, is there currently a vehicle charging on a particular port or not? Or is it available for another vehicle to go in and charge? Uh, the third is, are things like uh, the amount of kilowatt hours, the amount of energy that's being dispersed out of the charger. Um, I can schedule charging sessions. I can do a whole host of things. And then there's sustainability reporting that comes out of the platform as well. Things like how much CO2 have I saved? How many barrels of, of, how many barrels of oil? So as we talk about those metrics and reporting them back up to the powers that be, could be a board of directors, could be executives, right? We have all of that, all of that built into the platform. Now, in terms of access, we will see the chargers and because we're monitoring them with network services. Now, that does not mean that we can just do what we want with the data, right? The data uh, is owned by the client and, they're, and, they're the one, and they are uh, accessing it. They're providing a hierarchy. So one thing to close with, uh, Jeffrey, is that, you know, the United States needs a ton of charging stations out there. The number one reason why someone does not buy a battery electric vehicle is range anxiety. Right. It is do is there a charging station available for me to access on a consistent basis? So it is it's a big task for the industry. But one thing to keep in mind is, number one, we're, we're, we're very, very aware of it. Number two, every single day that goes by, a new charger goes into the ground from Blink and from others in the industry. We are very, very focused on right charger, right place, right time. Mike, uh, lots of great stuff. Uh, well, let's just talk about cause. So uh, what, what price points are we talking about for, uh, for installing a charger system? Yeah. So our product line actually runs uh, kind of the gamut in terms of price points. So a consumer can buy a home charging station from Blink for about $600. Mm -hmm. And then we go all the way up on the commercial side to, let's say, a 360 kilowatt DC fast charger, which is north of $100,000. So when we kind of separate the two for a moment, when we talk about installing commercial level two charging stations, something like this is going to run you about $7,000 and the installation cost is going to be somewhere around 15. Mm -hmm. Now that can vary. The installation costs are kind of the wild card. They yeah. can vary quite a bit, yeah. right? Depending on the situation, depending on the power available, how far, one of the real drivers of cost is how far we put the charging station from the electrical panel. So general conventional wisdom is on the commercial side is try to install a charger as close to the uh, electrical panel as possible while still being very accessible. Where do people go for more information? I would say blinkcharging.com. All right. Mike, thank you very Thanks much for your time. time. There you go. Blink Charging, if you're uh, planning to get yourself an EV vehicle, uh, this is where you're going to go. Uh, check it out over at Blink. Uh, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine at CES 2024. We have a lot more coverage coming on. So uh, go over to geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine, where you can like, subscribe, comment, bell notification, so all YouTubers get their wings. 
And until next time, you guys geek out and charge on.